Hey everyone, it's Diana from Deco Easy, the decoration channel of me and my mother-in-law Jenny. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch because we have a new DIY for you. Let's start crafting another one for the fall season. For today's DIY, I thought it would be good to give this old plastic watering can a makeover. This one comes from the old home when I still had plants and I don't have real plants, only artificial ones in the new home. So yeah, this thing is actually out of use, but I think it could be some great decor for the autumn fall season. Uh, the only thing is that I don't like the color, so I want to give it a, a Gavna steel or a metal look makeover. And there we're first going to start using this silver spray paint here, high gloss silver spray paint. This one comes from Action. Uh, I'm going to take this one outside and I think I will need two or three layers of this stuff to cover everything up. And uh, yeah, I hope it works out well because this surface is really, really smooth. And uh, oh, sorry, my hand is in the way. And it can be difficult to paint this. So first, Jenny gave me the flies spray really, really lightly, a really light layer. Uh, and then let it dry really good because that roughens up the surface. And hopefully that in the next layer of paint will stick really well. So I'm going to take these two outdoors and then I will be showing you how it looks like after the spray paint job. Well, actually, the paint, you know, stuck pretty well. Only there at the grip, I still have to do the repaint. Um, but first, let me dry this for, I think, half an hour will be okay. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, yeah, and then we're going to the next step. Okay, let's move over to the next step. This whole thing is now in the silver spray paint. And I want to give it some sort of uh, galvanized steel metal look. Therefore, I'm going to use this great chalk paint here. I have silver chrome spray but you can also use just a silver spray or silver paint and i have you know a sponge which i'm normally using to clean but i cut off quite a part i'm going to dab that just as a makeup sponge and for this stuff because it's in spray form i just have a paper cup because they don't sell plastic ones here anymore so now everything is made of paper or you know bamboo stuff but no plastic uh throwaway cups anymore I'm going to spray this inside that, but we'll do this as the last step because that really gives a finishing touch. Uh, so first I want to, well, let's say pour in some gray chalk paint into the cup here. Maybe only at the edge. So we can reuse the cup if necessary, just a little bit. And carefully put this thing aside. Now you take the yellow part of the sponge dab it in here if you can see it now I have paint first dabbing off the thickest layer and then you just start dabbing just like that might look pretty weird right now dab a little bit more while you dab this press a little bit towards one side so you get a really well, yeah, how shall I say it? This effect. Now it looks ugly, but believe me, this is going to look amazing if you use it with another type of paint. So I'm just going to continue doing this throughout the whole watering can until I'm satisfied with that result. And then this is where this buddy here comes in. See you soon. This is what it looks like right now. Now it has to dry. Uh, I hope you can see it well because I can't turn it over. Oh, but of course, I can do this. This here is the other side. Now, that is a little bit darker. Uh, I'm very sorry for the light suddenly, the sun's so shining. Uh, and I can't control the light really well in here. So, um, now I'm going to let the chalk paint dry. And then we're going to use the silver chrome spray as a last finishing touch. Okay. And here I have the paint. Now, let me turn this over, use the other side. Now you can do the same. Oh, let's just soak up some more paint. Now you can do the same, but then with this paint, just randomly over your creation. And then look, it starts to shine just like metal. And this really gives a finishing touch. I don't have, really, I don't have an instruction for this. Just do it and you will see how it turns out. Like this. 
And if you always, if you find a little bit too dark, then go ahead and use the darker this paint. Just use it again. No big deal. All right. I will see you soon when I'm done. Okay, now the light is better. Um, I think it dried really cool. Well, oh, there goes the light again. Let me focus on that. Yes, I think it looks really cool. Um, this is annoying. Uh, but I want to give it an older look, so I have dark brown paint here. Um, let me lay this down flat for you. Hopefully you can see it. Just pour some upon your finger. Doesn't have to be that much. I think this here is more than enough. I like to just dab a little bit to divide the paint a little bit better. And then, for example, here is an edge, or there, you can just really lightly first go with the dark brown alongside that edge to give it a rusty look. Something like this. This is optional, but I think it looks cute. But, of course, you are free to do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be that much if you don't want to, or just don't do it at all. This is just optional. And then he's here. Let me focus. This is how it looks. Well, you can do it, or you just don't do it. That's up to you. Yeah, I tried to do two sides. This here is without. And this side here. Let me focus the camera for you again. This is side with, is here is with the brown. Well, pick whatever you like. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll be back for a finishing touch with some twine and uh, yeah, maybe flowers or something else from the farm, uh, the farm, the fall season. <laughs> I have the glue gun here and I have a piece of twine. First, oh, there was the twine. It fell upon the floor. Here was the twine. Um, let me see how I can do this the best way. I think I just start gluing here on the bottom side of the grip and then just wrap it around a few times hopefully you don't see it that well let me first bundle up this twine a little bit so it's easy hopefully easier for me to go through otherwise i think it gets stuck and i can't use the whole cloche now this will fit in between here okay there we go Let's say up here. Now it starts dripping down. I like to use a pair of scissors to push it down before the glue starts to cool. Hold it a few seconds. Yes, we're there. And then first, let's take a round over here. This one can turn, be turned off because I'm only going to glue at the end, not all the way through. Just move a little bit to this side of the glue and then let's go back because otherwise you would have seen the uh, glue. The other glue was a little bit too big, so that was my fault. Now let's go all the way to this side here. There is a small end, yeah, now it is stuck underneath. And let's go roll in. And here you see a little detail. This here, that needs to be happening through the whole grip. So I'll try to do it as tight as I can. And when I'm done, I'll be back. Okay, the grip is done. I want to have the word fall upon here. Therefore, I have this wooden letter, so I'm going to sort out which one I need. And then I'm going to use the hot glue gun to glue them on this side and on the other side as well. Because I want to pick if I want the uh, sparkling, you know, the clean side or the old and... Uh, let me focus a little bit. The old and rusty side here. So that is up to oh, you. I have the word fall in two times. Let me lay down those letters first. Before I start gluing, I always want to... Lay them down first, and then I start. Oh, this way. And 
kind of like to start i think from the inside because then i can align everything better i'm going to think now that this thing won't waste still let me see if we can help that yes like this okay no oops line the whole thing well the surface isn't flat so that is a little bit annoying and i don't have a sticker or something this will do first let's take the l put some hot glue here at the back and then do like this now move down to the a nope spider web Doing the same thing with the A. And then the F and the other L. Oops, sorry. The other L. The thing wasn't standing steady. Sorry. If you're using headphones, that must have been hurting your eyes. Or ears, sorry. And then the L. And I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other side. And then let's top it off with some fall decor. This is, by the way, also really cute to do with any, um, how do you call that, watering can. Here it is, fall. Uh, inside of a wreath, for example. Here is the fall on the other side. Now I want to stick some autumn leaves in here. And therefore I have this big branch from the action. Uh, let me cut up several parts, which I can stick up here. And I'm going to search if I have any other decor that might fit in as well. Okay, while I'm decorating, I try to stay on both sides of the grip by, for example, pushing a leaf here underneath first and then stick it in open in here. And then you get a really cool, in my opinion at least, cool arrangement, which you can see from multiple sides. Also what look good in your window. So you can look from it to the inside part and people outside on the street might look to it as well. Actually, I think this looks pretty cute. Yeah, what do you think? Let us know in the comment section. Well, of course, I can better show it here. What do you think of this? Let us know. We're really curious. Well, I think we're almost done. The only thing I want to do is distress those letters a little bit and therefore I'm going to use this marker. Now, I want to show you I'm going to do that. Just starting to distress with the really fine tip of the uh, marker and then on the edge. Just mark first the outer parts. And if you want to mark it more, like, you know, give it a more distressed feeling, then I suggest just making bigger stripes. First, I like to do all around really close small line because I can always add some more black if I want to I'll show you the result in a few seconds here now you can see the difference of the F and this gives a little more distressed look if you want to add more then I suggest just using this or doing this for example Like so. Now it looks like there is a part coming out or a gap in the letter, um, but you can do it yeah, differently if you want to. You can also use paint, but I like to use this tool because it's so easy just using a marker. I'm going to distress the rest and I think then we're there. And here you see the final result of this DIY. Let me give you a close-up of those letters. This is how they look like right now. Just try to distress them as much as I could. I also like the distressed watering can. Well, let me move over or turn this thing over, I mean, to the other side. And on this side, I think it looks really cute too. I think I'm going to put this thing into, you know, behind my window. And uh, so people from outside and myself from inside can see the thing as well. Let us know what you think of this DIY by writing it down in the comment section. And Jenny and I wish you a really nice day. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. 
and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone!